Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word, meditating upon Psalm 53 with you. A short psalm, but one that really packs a punch. One that is very similar if you take take a look at Psalm 14, because it speaks about the foolishness of man and how that's met with, frankly, the greatness of God and the wisdom of God. But within that wisdom and within that foolishness, there's that separation and how beautiful it is that God actually pursues and connects with his people, Israel, as it says. But when you don't have that connection, you'll just do the things of men. The things of men is curse. The things of men is sin. The things of men are natural to do opposite of good because it's opposite of God. (laughs) And as we walk in that way, there's a consequence to that. There's fear involved, there is sin involved, there is death involved, and being able to say, some, a lot of times we don't even make sense of what we can actually walk in. We just walk in it because it's natural. And as we walk in that natural curse, we pay those consequences and we kind of throw up our hands and say, hey, what could I do? You're exactly right. When fear and death and natural sin is our path. There's not much hope in that. That's why the connection with God, the relationship with God, God's grace extended to you is such a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing because it's outside of us. What a gift it is to be able to walk in Christ, walk in righteousness, walk in wisdom. When you don't have that you fall to the ways of this world. Psalm 53. Let's meditate upon that. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Left to ourselves, we do not seek God. I I love how Martin Luther puts this in his uh, articles. I cannot, by my own reason or strength, come to Jesus Christ or even know of him, but the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has called me, has invited me. He's called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gift, walks with me, sanctifies me. He keeps me. He invites me into the truth. So it's a beautiful thing outside of us. That's why it's such a gift. The walk of faith, repentance, forgiveness is all a gift of God. Not even one can seek God. We wouldn't want that. We always are bent towards our nature, and that is opposite, away from God, but not God to us. God is not away from us. He doesn't leave us or forsake us. He actually pursues us with his word, his truth. How beautiful that is. Verse 4, will the evildoers never learn? Those who devour my people as men eat bread and who do not call on God? There they were, overwhelmed with dread, where there was nothing to dread. (laughs) There they were, the verse 5, just sitting in sin. They were fearful when there was nothing to fear. How could that be, humanly speaking? Well, it's because it's written on our heart. Sure, they have fear and they have dread because they are not with God. God scattered the bones of those who attacked you. You put them to shame for God despised them. Take a look at those tenses of those verbs, right? Past tense. That God has already enacted that. That's the consequence. That you're going to live in that past tense of that fear, that despised, that attacked. It's already been done. It's because from the time, as it says in Psalm 51, from the time my mother conceived me, I was born in sin. Oh, verse 6, 
Oh, that salvation for Israel would come, excuse me, would come out of Zion. The presence of God will come, would come, not this past tense, that he's going to continue to walk with us. Out of Zion, the presence of God. When God restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Jacob, the ancestor, Jacob is turned into that name of Israel. Those who wrestle with God, but I'd rather wrestle with God than not being able to be in his presence at all. Wrestle with God, being able to try to figure out and seek and understand because he sends his spirit upon us to do just that. Yeah, we wrestle. Yeah, we doubt. Yeah, we um, have all sorts of questions, but it's beautiful that we bring those to the Lord and try to figure out on our own how foolish it is the fool says in his heart there is no God may we not be foolish this day but rather say there is a God and he's leading he's guiding he's directing I am actually under his will Spirit of God do your work in me so that I don't take on this day that I don't take on these situations and these circumstances that I don't actually walk in any of my days trying to think of my own direction, but rather give me your will, your purpose for me in this day so that I can work for you. Because when you work for the Lord, it's never done in vain. But when you work for self, it's that, it's that word foolish. Let us walk in the wisdom of the Lord, the way of the Lord, and that is to walk in Christ. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is with you. Jesus is directing you. He's our shepherd, remember. He doesn't lead you in the way of foolishness. He leads you in the way of life, of truth. He leads you in the life of his kingdom. Thanks be to God. God's grace, God's mercy, God's connection to you. Nothing that you did. And that's why we say, let's give praise. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Yes, we are that new Israel. Be glad for God has encountered and connects and pursues you in his grace. Let us praise. Let us be glad. Have a blessed day.